Baruch here with Jen Connect, and we're joined today by Senator George Mitchell. Senator Mitchell, you were a special envoy to the Middle East, uh, really working on achieving peace over there. We're seeing quite a bit of activity, not such good activity going on right now in the region. What's your prediction for how the Middle East will continue to evolve over the next five, ten years? There will be continued turbulence. The political order in the Middle East, which was established really by Western powers, primarily Britain and France, following the First World War, now nearing 100 years, is collapsing, and we don't know for sure what is going to replace it. Uh, population growth is increasing dramatically there. There's been generally a history of uh, ineffective governance, the inability to provide growing economies, jobs, housing, health care, education, basic needs of people. Uh, and I think that will continue and accelerate over some period of time until it gets sorted out and a new order is established. When we see uh, an organization like ISIS, you know, so many people underestimated them. And I think many people are now saying, you know, we should have taken them a little bit more seriously. Yes. Do you think that there are any other organizations that we're underestimating right now? Undoubtedly, uh, there will be continued offshoots of uh, various brands of extremist groups. Uh, I think ISIS was initially underestimated. I think there's a danger now in overestimating them. I don't think they have the capacity to establish or organize a state, and I think uh, in fairly short order uh, that will become clear. But that doesn't mean the threat doesn't exist because it will exist in other areas, in other circumstances. Keep in mind that the conflict between Sunni and Shia Muslims began 1400 years ago following the death of the Prophet Muhammad and was a political struggle for control after his death. Two factions emerged, one now the Sunnis, one now the Shia, and that competition has continued in conflict at times, otherwise at not, not in remission and expansion. Right now it's in a period of expansion and intensity, not just in Iraq, but in Syria, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, and in other places, and that is likely to continue. But I do think there's also a very large number of people in the region who want more open, tolerant, hopefully democratic societies in which people have the right of self-governance, respect the rights of minorities, uh, and we'll see how it plays out. The likely is, likelihood is it'll take some time, as it has in the West. You know, in the United States, in a far simpler time, eight years elapsed after the end of the fighting in the Revolution and the establishment of our government. In France, 50 years. In England, 210 years. So anybody who thinks that this Middle East thing is going to sort out in the next six months or next couple of years, I think, uh, isn't reviewing history. So I think it'll continue, but uh, I think we should and can be supportive of those who share our values, who do what we can to be helpful, but not succumb to the temptation of the view that the United States can control every event everywhere in the world. Let's switch gears for a moment to some of your work post-public service. You had leadership roles in companies like Disney, Xerox, FedEx, some of the best known American brands. Yes. Do you think that we're realizing our fullest potential when it comes to public-private partnerships? No, I don't think uh, we're realizing our full potential in many beneficial areas, and certainly in that one, uh, and that's an area that I think should be even further explored. The companies that you mentioned, Disney, Xerox, FedEx, great companies, great leaders, doing a lot in that area, but no human endeavor is perfect and no human lives up fully to his or her aspirations. And so I think we've got a good thing and we should make it even better. Senator George Mitchell, thank you so much. Thank you. And for more with Senator Mitchell, be sure to check out Gen Connect.